Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here to hear this talk about liberal arts. My name is Helen Brookman, and I am the Director of Liberal Arts at King's College London. So that means I'm the Head of Department. I run the Liberal Arts Programme along with our 15 major subject departments um, and my colleagues in the Liberal Arts Department as well. So first, a little bit about King's as a context um, and why you might want to choose to come and study here and particularly to study Liberal Arts. Um, so obviously we have a particularly long history of academic excellence in teaching uh, the liberal arts, teaching the arts and sciences um, at university level, being the fourth oldest university in England, um, with King's being established in 1829. The university is made up of nine faculties, institutes and schools, and the liberal arts programme is delivered within two of those, so that's arts and humanities and then social science and public policy. So it's a programme that crosses between two different faculties. What's it like to be taught and to learn at King's? So mostly that's occurring through lectures, seminars and some smaller group tutorials. Um, and that means that you're getting that direct contact with academics, whether those be the sort of leading subject researchers within classics or politics in the major subjects, or my colleagues in the liberal arts team who teach on the core modules in the liberal arts programme, which I'll go on to tell you a little bit more about. We have lots of study abroad opportunities. I'll say a little bit more about those. Internship opportunities. The Associateship of King's College, evening language classes and so on and so on. And obviously the other big factor in thinking about studying at King's is our location and you will already know um, from having travelled here today how wonderful it is to be right in the heart of London. So we're right at the top there where it says King's Strand Campus and then for example if you're going to a class in the Waterloo Campus, for example walking to your politics class, you get to go to class by travelling over Waterloo Bridge and getting one of the best views in London. So the location is a big part of why a lot of people choose to come and study at King's. So now I'll focus in detail on the liberal arts degree and you may well be wondering what is this? Today might be the first time you've heard of such a thing. Um, so I'll go through this in a fair bit of detail and explain what it is and how the programme works. So you may know that liberal arts education has an extremely long history, much, much longer than the idea of a single subject degree which really only emerged in the 19th century with academic research and specialisation within the disciplines. Before that people would do a broad-based degree programme to develop critical thinking skills in the critical mind and that in the UK in the last decade has seen a resurgence and there are now, I'm sure you'll be aware, lots of liberal arts programmes which move away from that single subject model. So really we want this to be an opportunity for you as students to develop not just knowledge um, and skills within a single discipline but a flexible interdisciplinary skill set. Um, so that means the ability to move between disciplines and to synthesise knowledge across disciplinary boundaries which are extremely transferable skills when you move into the workplace or into further study where problems are not neatly defined and confined to single disciplines but require you to be flexible thinkers and as we say intellectual risk takers. Another really key feature of the programme is that we've designed it very much to connect with the world outside of the university, particularly taking advantage of our London location. The first core module that you'll do when you come into the Liberal Arts programme is called Lives of London and involves you going out into the city in research teams, investigating aspects of London, its history, its culture, its societies. So very much being in contact with um, the city and with the world around us. And also we really see the Liberal Arts programme as a very outward-looking, globally aware programme and try to cultivate uh, those qualities within our students. So we have a compulsory language within the first year, for example, and then we have a very popular study abroad semester in the second year of the degree, which I'll explain more about, meaning that um, we are developing students who are globally aware, um, international thinkers, um, as well as being uh, knowledgeable about London as a city. So this is kind of distilled the overview of the liberal arts degree programme. I've mentioned these core modules. That is the element of the programme that you're required to take with other liberal arts students in the first, second and third years of the programme. So that forms this interdisciplinary spine, which is really pulling the diverse aspects of the programme together. But the rest of the degree is very much up to you. So this is the most flexible degree programme that you can um, imagine within the context of a, a British university. So you're choosing from modules across the arts, humanities and the social sciences and often these are subjects in which King's has world leading researchers, researchers and teachers. So you come in, you try a range of different things rather than selecting one subject before you come and then you only have to select what we call your major subject, your concentration in the spring term of the first year. Um, so you've had a chance to try different things out. 
From that point onwards, so in years two and three, half of your credits will come in your major subject, but the other half you'll continue to do different things outside of that single concentration. So it remains flexible throughout the length of the whole programme. There are also possibilities for you to minor in a second subject, and I'd be happy to answer questions if people uh, have them about how that works. And as I've mentioned, there's this opportunity for study abroad. So we've got a very wide range of destinations for you to go study abroad. We've got some liberal arts um, partners, which I'll uh, list on a future slide. But we've also got the opportunity for you to go to the uh, study abroad destinations from the partner universities from your major subject. So you have the same access as if you were studying that subject, but also to some liberal arts um, specific destinations for study abroad. We also very importantly have an internship module which is embedded within the degree programme. So this is optional, but if you want to get experience in industry or business um, or a sector that you're thinking about going into after you graduate, you can work with our internship office to secure that opportunity and then you can study for credit as part of the degree. So you write a reflective portfolio about that internship. It will appear on your degree transcript and just really indicates another aspect of your employability when you finish the degree programme. So um, that's something we particularly offer within liberal arts. Okay, so this is the breakdown now of what that would actually look like when you came to study um, and how that would work in terms of each year of the programme. So I mentioned already this module, Lives of London, that's the first semester, so you'll come into the programme, meet with other liberal arts students, learn about London's history, its culture, and then we work in these interdisciplinary uh, research teams, working with one tutor in the liberal arts department to go out and stage an investigation, and building a, a, a portfolio of digital artefacts relating to the city to show your research um, in a digital portfolio. Um, so that is the, the first uh, module, which is an exciting thing to do when you first arrive in London. And the second semester, really we're seeking then to help develop you as critical thinkers and as writers. So again, we have different interdisciplinary strands which you can choose on topics. And you develop your writing, working again in groups and with a tutor um, to get feedback, lots of feedback on your written work as you're bedding into the programme in this first year. And that helps students to develop their confidence within their uh, subjects that they're studying in departments as well as within the, the liberal arts programme itself. And then, as I've mentioned, uh, we do have a required language component in the first year. Every student studies a language, we think that's really important, but you don't have to have studied any language before. The Modern Language Centre offers dozens of different languages, so you can study Arabic or Mandarin, or you can do French, German, Spanish. If you want to, you can carry on a language that you've got up to A-level, as long as it's available at the right um, stage in each language, or you can start a new language completely from scratch. It's very flexible. And then, as I mentioned, the rest of your time in your first year, you're studying optional modules, and we refer to these as gateway modules. So they're the gateways to the different majors. So when you come, the range of subjects that you select in your first year, that will open up a set of majors to you from within our overall 15 majors. Um, and then you will choose one of those to go into um, for the next two years of the programme. So these are the majors that we have. Um, they are 13 subjects from within Arts and Humanities, and then Politics and Geography from within the Faculty of Social Science and Public Policy. And you'll see, perhaps in contrast to some previous materials you may have seen, that our Modern Languages pathways have merged into one combined pathway. So there used to be four separate ones, French, German, Spanish, Portuguese. They're now one Modern Languages pathway, which includes an entire year abroad. Um, so that's going to be new for next year. It means, the fact they merge together means you can concentrate in, for example, French, but you can take um, a German cinema module, for example, so it's flexible across the different uh, language traditions. This is the second year then, so there is again a core module, um, which is called Space Power Agency, and is continuing to develop your skills as an interdisciplinary thinker, um, tackling these big concepts from different disciplinary perspectives. And we have teachers from different disciplines teaching in the classroom at the same time, modelling that conversation across subjects and helping you to think, how might we approach this uh, complex problem from one perspective using one set of tools, methods, approaches, and now might, might, what might it look like if we came from a different perspective? You're doing, as I mentioned, half your studies in your major, um, and then the rest in non-major options. So say you chose to major in film studies, you could perhaps continue with some modules in classics and some modules in philosophy. And that's the, the sort of nature of the flexibility of, of the programme, is you can keep up those other interests. If you choose to study abroad, it looks the same, except you're only doing half of that amount of study because for the entire second semester, you've gone off to your study abroad destination, you do all your study and assessment there, and you then just come back into the programme uh, at the beginning of the third year. 
And this is what the third year looks like. So translation across disciplines is, again, our core module, the one that we study together within liberal arts. This module really is bringing everything in the liberal arts degree programme together. So you start with a research case study of your choice within your major subject, and then you form into multidisciplinary teams and identify a research question, and you work together from your range of different disciplinary perspectives um, to solve that problem or to answer that question. So you're really using each other's skills as a multidisciplinary group, really to do original research and to, to identify new knowledge and new areas of study. And then exactly the same as the second year, you've got half your study in your major and half as non-major options. So as I've emphasised, liberal arts is innovative because most programmes within the UK context are still either a single honours degree or a combined or joint honours degree, which means you have to select before you come what you're going to be studying. Liberal arts, you just choose liberal arts and then you've got another year to think about where you might want um, to focus your attention. So it's innovative in the UK context and it is very flexible. So you're really tailoring your own degree and we like to think about it as that you're sort of charting an intellectual pathway or you're setting off on an intellectual journey that you're in control of. So you're the one who is authoring um, your line of development through these different subjects and getting to often a completely unique place. So there will be nobody who has studied the exact combination of subjects that you have studied, making you a unique interdisciplinary expert in that particular set of subjects, which is the thing I really find most exciting about the liberal arts degree. Someone who's done a, a single honours degree programme with less choice, lots of people will be studying the same things, whereas you've really got the opportunity to make it a totally unique um, and bespoke programme. I have to mention this, so there are some of our uh, fellow liberal arts programmes are what's called liberal arts and sciences programmes, and they're really thinking across the arts and humanities and the hard sciences. We are not a programme with any science components, so if you don't have maths or science at A-level, um, then this might be a, a more appropriate choice for you rather than an arts and sciences programme. So our focus is only on the arts, humanities and the social sciences. This is a course that's delivered within um, the very heart of London and is really seeking to make the most of that within the learning opportunities as well, obviously, of course, as all the social and extracurricular opportunities that you have um, with being within that programme. So not just our core modules, but lots of the subject um, modules that you will study will be making the most of the cultural and political institutions that the city has in order to provide learning opportunities for you that you wouldn't really be able to get anywhere else in the world. I mentioned those study abroad exchanges. The ones that are bespoke to liberal arts are our partnership with the New School in New York, which is an extremely popular one, with a liberal education college in Maastricht in the Netherlands, um, and newly with Waseda University in Tokyo. And you can go do a liberal arts style study abroad semester at any of those institutions, as well as I mentioned, at all the partner institutions of your chosen major subject. So here it's tailored and unique um, and you're having the opportunity, you've got access to all these leading departments without having to necessarily pre-select that you're going to be studying uh, at a programme within those. So it opens up um, those 15 departments within King's to you. Our Lives of London module has been very pioneering within King's in the use it's made of, of uh, the city as uh, what we like to think of as a laboratory for interdisciplinary learning. So what might then happen once you've got a liberal arts degree is a very good question to ask. So one thing I should emphasise is just because it is a much more broad-based degree doesn't close off postgraduate study. So lots of our graduates go on to do master's programmes either within their major subject, so they're just the same as if you'd done a BA in history, you can go on to do an MA in 18th century history, for example very common pathway, or often they want to go on and do maybe an interdisciplinary master's or a more vocational master's, and having done a flexible programme like liberal arts suits people, particularly for, for moving across those different boundaries and for doing something more interdisciplinary at further study level. Equally, careers in a very wide variety of fields, so it's the same sorts of subjects that you might imagine from any arts, humanities and social science degree. Here are just a few examples. I'd be happy to talk on the stall about, and our students will, about the sorts of things um, that liberal arts students have gone on to do. But really it's these transferable skills that we feel the liberal arts programme particularly offers um, because of the nature of studying across so many different subjects and of being asked to synthesise that knowledge within our core modules. So you've learned independence, independence of study, of research, working in the team-based elements of the modules. You've really learned communication skills and time management. Um, I've already said about the emphasis in the liberal arts degree on critical thinking and we're, we're really encouraging reflection throughout the degree so 
Why am I studying this particular combination of subjects? What has that taught me um, about knowledge, about myself? And this idea of adaptability and flexibility. So when we did a study of the first cohort of liberal arts students who graduated, that was the thing they most emphasised, they felt they got from the programme. So they're not just coming out, as I've said, with um, a single set of skills. They really have learned how to adapt to different contexts, which in most modern workplaces is just a really crucial skill to have, is that whatever is thrown at you, you can adapt to that new context and you're able to demonstrate to employers that you've already done that within your degree. Great. So I've been signalled. It's the end of my talk. And thank you for listening. <laughs>